Hello there everyone, this is UXW Bill here once again with an answer to an interesting question. As many of you know, I really am into the compact cassette format. I like doing things like making mixtapes and doing things along those lines. The question I'm going to answer, what do you get the compact cassette enthusiast who already has everything? The answer would be this. Now I'm sure that many, if not all of you, have definitely heard of compact disc changers. But have you ever heard of a cassette changer? Well, that's exactly what this thing on the bottom is. This is a Pioneer multi-cassette changer, model number CT-M55R. And I get the feeling that these actually aren't all that uncommon. I have seen cassette changers before, but most of them are based on a carousel sort of design and seem to date from sometime in the 1970s. This one actually dates from the early 1990s. The date codes inside it pin its manufacture to sometime around 1991. And it does everything that you would expect a cassette player to do, but rather surprisingly, it is capable of recording. And if you were to use 120 minute tapes in this thing, which may well not be recommended, you could actually record on, in a relay mode for up to 12 hours straight with this thing. So on the outside, this thing is just a pretty average cassette machine until you actually open the front door and then a little tray slides out and you can start loading your cassettes. Now you're supposed to be careful to load them so that the A side is playing left, is facing left, but there's no real requirement to do that. It's just a recommendation so that you can keep everything straight when you're playing your tapes and you're trying to be sure which side is actually A or B. Now once you've loaded your cassettes, you can actually go ahead and close the tray and the door shuts right behind it. And you're ready to play. The display changes to indicate how many cassettes are loaded in the machine. You can see there are presently five in there now. There's not a whole lot in here in terms of unused characters, although there are some. As you can see, it does have a minute and second time counter display, but it's very, very crude. It doesn't actually use anything from the tape. It just kind of ticks along as the tape is playing, and it actually turns off in rewind and fast forward, so you can't view a real-time display of what it's up to. Well, let's go ahead and play a tape in this thing. If we want to play the tape that's in position two, for example, and make sure that's... Yep, that's the one I'm looking for. Go ahead and close it. slides the tape away, and then it starts blinking some play symbols at us. Presumably it's ready to play something, so let's go ahead and try playing the tape. That's right, if you thought that sounded like the Commodores had a hard night out, they did. It's definitely running a bit slow. The speed on the mechanism needs to be adjusted. Now the belts and everything are good, so it's not that. I guess the adjustments have just drifted over the years. So we'll go ahead and get our cassette back by pressing the cassette return button. We'll go ahead and load another cassette here. And it's actually possible to open this tray while there is a cassette loaded in the mechanism. Now you would think that you might be able to accidentally double load this thing, and you probably could if you were determined enough. But there is actually a guide comes up here that makes the area for the cassette a little smaller. So a cassette won't fit properly in it, unless of course you were to use an unjustifiable amount of force. So there's not much to say about the exterior of this thing. On the outside, it's just a mostly average cassette deck with the ability to play up to six cassettes at once. And you can set it to play in auto-stop mode, you can set it to play in auto-reverse mode, and of course you can have it run through all the tapes sequentially. Let's go ahead and have a look inside this thing, because that's really where all the magic is at here. Now I absolutely do not recommend transporting any kind of changer device with the media that it supports in place, but in this case it would appear that the opportunity for media to escape is very low. Still, I'd play it safe if you were going to move your own one of these and take all the tapes out of it before you do. 
Now the cover comes off in a pretty straightforward manner and reveals the magic within. Now if you're going to take your own unit apart, be very careful of this board right here that goes to the power switch because that puppy is directly connected to the AC line and you could really hurt yourself. Of course, I am absolutely not responsible for anything that happens, good or bad, if you should decide to take your own Pioneer cassette changer or any other electronic device for that matter apart. This is just provided as mainly an informational video. So let's see here. Let's get this thing into position, hopefully without completely disturbing the table runner, which is not really working out. Go ahead and turn it on here. You can actually hear the mechanism go through its initialization cycle. The main board in the unit is really not anything you wouldn't already expect to find in a typical compact cassette deck, but it obviously has the extra ability to control the changer mechanism, and there are a couple things going on here in the changer mechanism. First of all, you have these slides in the bottom, the purpose of which will become apparent in just a moment. And then you have this carriage right here, and that carriage actually slides out and lines up with one of the six cassette positions. So if I were to press cassette button number one, you can see how the cassette slides into it, and then the, the playback and recording deck is actually over here. Now this was an eBay find, and as found, it did not work. Now it definitely needs some work. For example, I have to set the speed on it. But the belts seem to be in pretty good condition for as old as it is. They don't seem to be flabby or slick, and the mechanism doesn't have any trouble cycling through its various um, modes of operation. Now, the cassette mechanism is certainly not the highest quality that I've ever seen, but it should be entirely adequate for a unit like this, where obviously fidelity takes a back seat to convenience. As found, this thing would load a tape, but it wouldn't actually play it. You could press the play button and you would hear the tape running, but the playheads would not engage. As you can see, there's a solenoid coil here that serves to shift the mechanism into gear to play a play or record a cassette tape. And that solenoid was stuck. I was able to free it up and get the unit working so that if I hit the play button, everything engages and starts running like it ought to. And there, as you can see, it hit the end of the tape because I asked it to play the B-side. So we'll go the other way with that. I think setting the speed on this thing will be a simple matter of taking one of my plastic speed adjusters and turning the speed adjustment inside that motor. However, this is a multi-motor transport. But I don't see any speed adjustments on the main board, so I'm guessing that single motor is all there is to it. And as you can see, the date code on the motor Although 56 is not a valid week, you can see that it says 14 March 1991. When you're done playing a cassette, you can hit the stop button, and if you just open the tray, it doesn't actually require that the cassette that's loaded in the playback mechanism be released. So there's a button on the front that says Cassette Return. And you can press that, and the mechanism will in turn unload the cassette for you and return it to the loading area. And now you can see the cassette has definitely been returned to availability. Same thing happens for any of the other positions. And then as soon as it's put the tape in the mechanism, you can, of course, ask it to go ahead and play. And you can, of course, tell this thing to do some very interesting things. For example, you can tell it to do the relay play mode. You can tell it to do the random play mode. I'm not totally sure what the scan button does because I haven't actually pressed it. If you have a Pioneer or compatible CD device that supports the uh, system linking feature that, Pioneer, that some Pioneer devices support, you can engage CD synchronized recording. You can also tell this thing to rewind every cassette that's in it, in which case the mechanism will go through, just rewound that tape, now it's going to load the next one and rewind it. 
And that one's already been rewound. Most of these have been rewound, so this probably wasn't the most productive demonstration ever. But it does let you see that nifty changing mechanism in action, and that is really cool. Doesn't look like it's had a lot of use. So really, I think the only things I'm going to have to do this thing, I think I'll have to set the speed, clean and demagnetize the head because it does seem a bit dirty, and then it should be set to go. That's quite a bit better. There's a glimpse at the tape playback mechanism, at least as much of it as you can see. You can definitely see the head is kind of dirty. It's got a splotch of material on it. But other than that, everything is pretty much what you'd expect. There is really only one more thing to say about this thing, and that's a request for the service literature. If anybody might have the service manual for one of these machines, I would greatly appreciate it, because I suppose that there probably will come a time when I will need to service this thing, and it would be nice to know how to do it so that I can understand how to take the mechanism apart and things like that. I checked with Pioneer. Pioneer shows it on their online parts website, but lists it as out of stock, and a call to them said that they did not expect to have any more of these manuals come into their stock system. I went to the stereomanuals.com website and also tried a web search. Stereo Manuals has the schematics and stuff, but the actual service procedures for dismantling the mechanism and changing belts and doing things like that are on a card of uh, microfish. Now I actually have a fish reader and they're willing to loan me the fish but I don't have any way of duplicating it for my own reference further down the road other than maybe just to point a still camera at a tripod at my fish reader and go from there which obviously isn't ideal. So if anyone could help with that it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one.